Hi, everyone. My mission and goal is to take you playing to the next level and inspire you. Let's work on the jig from Bach's Six Suite. Despite of the difficulty in this piece, I try to have a frolicking good time, and you should too. First reverse in the opening four bars. Uh, we start with the down bow for the down beat. And here we have up bow. Try and follow the as it comes slurs that Anna Magdalena wrote, as I think they will add to the yin and yang feel of this first statement. five we have a change of mood much like in the second uh, sweet jig so try an echo in bars seven and eight so this echo can be achieved by also hooking your slurs the second time around so hook uh, or seven some change is needed in my opinion between bars five six and bars seven and eight <laughs> So the D and C sharp clash. Here we can follow Anna Magdalena's marks and not slur any of the notes, uh, starting bar 11. Or try elongating the notes in red, uh, bars 9, 11, 13, and 13. 14 and 15. So starting F sharp. Going to E. Going to D. There are a lot of tricky shifts in this uh, movement. Try to avoid audible shifts as much as possible by lifting your bow when you change position. So here I use my thumb in bar 15. Another note, I try also to follow Anna Magdalena's slurs, although they're uh, tricky. Uh, <laughs> at best, so... That's easier, of course, to play this uh, chord on the down bow, but playing on the up bow has its uh, benefits as well. Uh, when we break a chord on the up bow, we have better uh, grip. Sort of leading to the top note. Uh, also, here we are have to compensate by playing two up bows. Here, as it comes, it seems a little more natural to me. I like taking a little bit of time before the upbeat to bar 17. So. and yourself time to catch the strings. <laughs> Comparing the Kellner copy and the Anna Magdalena copy in bars uh, 18 and 19 is, is interesting. You can try and bounce in bar 20, so... <laughs> Uh, with a lifted spirit, bars 
21 and 22 are again heavier in my opinion <laughs> Heavier again and vertical. To quote Anna Bilsma, uh, from here to the double bar we have a written crescendo. Here I choose to play in the thumb position. So I'm already uh, ready for the what's coming up, uh, but of course you can play those sort of and jump slurs. So. attention to that second beat in bar 24 it is under a slur and this is definitely not a mistake uh, as Bach writes the second voice uh, as a dotted quarter uh, all other second voices are 16th notes so. Okay to take time for the big leaps. So definitely a, a crescendo in terms of intervals. So the intervals become much bigger, especially in this suite. One of the things to help you uh, practice this bars 24, 25, uh, to try and keep the D uh, constant, so it, it should be really the same pitch. Uh, this D and this. Same here, C, C sharp. second part of this dance starts with a darker color in B minor. Make that clear and contrast with a very sunny D major beginning. So beginning we have and then so make that obvious. Uh, this is Anna Magdalena wrote F sharp G. Um, it's also beautiful. Like those three dots in bar 29. There are only three instances uh, of Bach adding dots in the cello suites. These are in the jigs of suites number one and three, and in this jig, so number six. So. You can accent uh, those notes, a little vibrato perhaps. Also interesting is to compare Kellner's slurs and Anna Magdalena's slurs. This is Anna Magdalena's, and then notice that both starts a slur in bar 34 on the second 16th note, so it doesn't look like a mistake. Uh, one reason to use the shorter bows that Anna Magdalena wrote rather than long bows that cover whole beats is to avoid shifts. <laughs> takes uh, a lot, quite a bit of practice, but really don't play or, or whatever you may do. <laughs> For 
four thirty six, uh, second beat could be in two rather than in three. Three and three. <laughs> same string watching.